We start, of course, with Newton's second law. John, what is Newton's second law? That equals the derivative of momentum with vectors on momentum. And force. I'm sorry, this is what I got so far. That's what uh, I got. Force uh, over time. Okay. Force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time with force, uh, the sum of the force. It's gonna take a while. I, I, that's okay. <laughs> I know, we changed it too. Okay, so the net force equals the derivative of momentum as a function of time. As you remember, any derivative is also an integral, so let us rearrange. We have the net force with respect to time is equal to the p's. We can take the integral of both sides. We will do um, definite integrals here, so we'll go from the initial to the final momentum and the initial net force to the final or sorry, the initial time to the final time. So what we end up with here is the change in momentum equals the integral of the net fourth force with respect to time. Of course, from time initial to time final. Now, this, the, the change in momentum and the sum of the, or the integral of the net force with respect to time is also equal to, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, we'll do this in two pieces. So this is equal to I, which stands for the impulse. So the impulse is the change in momentum of the object. It's also equal to the integral of the net force with respect to time. Do me a favor, find that on your equation sheet. Got it? Um, so you've got a J instead here. So notice that sometimes you'll see impulse with an I, sometimes you'll see impulse with a J. I will try to use them interchangeably. I don't know why that is. People disagreed. And no one ever agreed that they should use the same thing. So you'll see impulse for both, with both J and I. You're welcome. Now, there's also something important to understand, which is something called the impulse approximation. The impulse approximation says that during a collision, the force during the collision is much, much greater than all the other forces. And therefore, the net force can just be the force during the collision. So you will usually see this rather than the net force as the change momentum, F, change momentum equals the integral of force with respect to time, and that is the impulse. So notice it's a subtle distinction here, but rather than the net force, we're talking about the, just the force during the collision, the force of impact, if you will. And we just made it the assumption that that force of impact is much, much greater than all the other forces during that collision. It's a pretty common thing to do. Now notice, this is not the integral of force with respect to position. What, Loki, is that? The, the integral of force with respect to position. Yes. Door setter, help her. Help Isn't it the Ah, that's actually, uh, there's a, not quite, uh, Emily. That is the work done by whatever force you're talking about. So notice the, how similar these two are. So please be very careful. The impulse is equal to the integral of force with respect to time, whereas work is equal to the integral of force with respect to position. Remind me, what is the integral by definition? What does it represent as far as a graph is concerned? Zach? <laughs> Thank you for the quotes. <laughs> what do the quotes remind me for the under me, Pajarella? Area under the curve? Under the curve is negative. 
It's not quite right. It's close. <coughs> Travis? It's uh, the area between the curve and the x axis. It's negative, it's below the x or time axis, depending on which one you're talking about here. And it's the area between the curve and that x axis. Okay. So, a lot of times during a collision, you'll have a graph which is the force in newtons as a function of time in seconds or milliseconds, depending on the graph. And it will end up looking something like this. Some sort of force that looks like that. And the impulse would be represented by the area, as we said, under the curve. That would be the impulse. Sometimes, rather than looking at the force as a function of time, we'll just talk about the average force. So the average force that would have the same impulse would actually look like this. If it were instead to draw it this way, we could say the average force where this is the force average. And this would be the area for that. Notice that those two have approximately the same area. And the way we would illustrate that is just that the impulse equals the F with a line over it. Note it's not a vector symbol, just a line multiplied by delta T, where this is generally the average force. doing the line over the top so that you get used to it. Sometimes you'll see it with the line over the top for force average. Sometimes you'll see F instead of average. Again, just trying to get used to all sorts of different uh, conventions here. 